getting Maeve some new water. Oh man. Does that white look good? Make sure the stream's actually working. I apologize for everything this past week. Um, I've missed a lot of content, and I will tell you why very shortly. Uh, but before I do, I'm going to make sure we're actually live. Hold on. Okay, all right, I think we're live. Okay, let's wait for everybody to get in here. Can you guys hear me okay? Make sure the mic level's all right. Looks like it is, it might be peaking a little bit. Let's see. How about, right about, right about there. That's probably good, right there. Oh boy. Um. Okay, everyone's starting to get in. We'll give it another couple, maybe a minute or so. Uh, Hanker for Life sent uh, five Rons. I don't know what Ron is, but thank you very much. There's no comment on there, though. Um, we have Discord now. Check the description. Everybody hit like. Um, if you are watching this after the stream has been live, all the links to stuff is, are in the description. Make sure to hit like. It helps with the algorithm and all that stuff. So, uh, I see Aunt Andy just sent something. He's probably going to ask how my week's been. Yep, Andy. <laughs> Andy says, hey there, how's your week? How has your, or how's your week been? Uh, I'm about to tell you in a second. Uh, Beatrix is not out right now, but we might let her out later. I don't know how long this stream's going to go for, because I haven't, I haven't slept much the past few days, so... I've been a little uh, exhausted. I want to. I want to make sure most of our regulars are in here before I start explaining. Maeve, what are you doing in there? You getting into trouble? Okay, we have like three hundred people in here now, so that's a. I think we can. I think we can work with that. Oh crap. Um. I'll read, okay, I just got something on PayPal, but I'll, I'll read it in a second. Let me, let me mute my notifications so it doesn't start going off in the microphone. Um, well, I'll just start at the beginning of this past week, uh, like right after last week's live stream, uh, we got hit with hail, like horribly. Like, I literally thought we were all about to die, because it sounded like... It sounded like a tornado was throwing debris at my house. It was just being pummeled. Like, it was... I've never heard it or seen anything like it. And uh, my grandpa said the same thing. He was... he was, Or he lives about maybe 20 miles away from me. But they got, they got it too. And it was like tennis ball-sized hail. And it was in a volume I've never seen. Like, it was piled up on my front porch. <laughs> like just stacked and then uh my grandpa said that it was stacked at their house in the shade until the next day and it was it was like 80 85 degrees the next day or something like that anyways uh it tore my roof up uh, pretty much completely uh it broke my skylight in my bathroom and uh that's going to have to all be repaired now, and that kind of sucks because, you know, we've been trying to move, and I just, I did a lot of stuff, I've been doing a lot of stuff this past month or so trying to prepare everything here to move, like get the house ready to, where it's presentable to sale, or sell, not sale, to go for sale. Hey, Maeve is right here. 
You want to come say hi to everybody? I got you a bath. Come here. You want a blueberry? What did I do with those blueberries? Oh, did I leave them in there? I left them in the kitchen. I'm sorry. <laughs> come here. You want to step up? Come on. You're not going to cooperate today? Okay. Um... What was I saying? Oh yeah, my so my my car survived though, so that's good. <laughs> there was no damage to my car as far as I've seen, which is a freaking miracle. Thankfully, there's a lot of trees around my house, so um, you know that was a blessing. But I don't know, it sucks. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, I've been doing stuff around here trying to get the house ready to sell. And, uh, so I've been working on that this past week as well. And now the house is, like, or the roof is destroyed, at least. Uh, there's no, I don't see, there's a little tiny leak where that skylight is. But, uh, thankfully there's no leaks other than that, from what I've seen. And then I had some emotional stuff happen <laughs> in addition to that this week. Uh, I'm not going to get into that too much, but, uh. Just kind of, it was very painful for me, but we'll continue on to the part where my bathroom flooded, <laughs> which was entirely my fault trying to, oh man, I'm, I'm really stupid sometimes. I tried to, I tried to clean, uh, this bathtub I never use in my master bathroom. I never use the bathtub. So I was like, I better get this thing freaking clean because we have, I, I have well water, which ends up staining the fiberglass. And I was like, I gotta get all these stains out. So I, I put all this cleaner on. I left it for like a few hours and I was like, all right, we're gonna wash the bathtub out now. And so I was like, I'm gonna fill the bathtub up <laughs> and then just let it drain to get to get rid of the majority of it. And then I, I walked off and started doing, I, th I think I started cleaning uh, Maeve and Beatrix's cages. And somehow I just completely forgot and I, I left it on for like a couple hours. <laughs> Thankfully, my uh, water tank, like, drained, so it started, you know, the flow of water slowed down at, at a certain point, but, so that was the whole thing, and then, uh, I don't know, I just haven't slept much this past week, so that's why we didn't do the, we didn't do the live stream yesterday, because I, I didn't sleep at all the night before, and I just didn't feel, and I didn't really sleep that much last night either, but I didn't sleep at all that night. And now I'm just kind of, I don't know, I just feel bleh. So, that's why there hasn't been any content this week, and that's why uh, the live stream was delayed until today. And I was thinking about doing a gaming live stream, but I don't know, I don't know whether to do that or not, because I don't want to play, uh, I don't want to play anything that could be too graphic or too much cursing or stuff for our audience, because I know that, you know, I mean, my channel is mostly accessible to everybody, and I want to kind of keep it that way, so I'm trying to figure out what to do about that. Maybe we'll do Twitch or something, and just have something separate for stuff like that, so you can choose to go see it if you want to, and the birds would be out, of course, but uh, I don't know. I'll figure something out. I know you guys want it, so, especially based on the uh, feedback I got on the poll this past week, so. But yeah, I'm, I'm drinking this Coke now uh, to, what, what am I trying to say? I deserve this. I'm not drinking water today. <laughs> I deserve to put this poison in my body. I can end this hellish facade we call life sooner. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No one freak out. Um, okay, we should actually uh, leave. Or not leave. Read. See, I'm going to be saying a lot of stupid stuff today because I'm, like, tired. So you're going to have to forgive me. But let's... Uh, Let's read some of the, let me get to the thingamajig real quick. We'll start, we'll start reading what people are saying.
Where is the thing? Oh, here we go. Oh boy. Okay. See if I can uh, zoom in on, on our comments here. I want to make sure I don't miss the Streamlabs ones. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, so that answers Andy's question. Uh, Acer Light sent $20, 1999 but no comment. Thank you, Acer. Good to see you again. Uh, Curtis D. also sent to 1999 And he says, hey Brock, hope all, all is well. Um, I mean, generally, everything's fine. It's just, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta deal with stuff and it sucks. Um, where was I? Oh, Dionysus sent $3 and said, world's been crazy, cra bleh. see, I cannot read today. World's been crazy lately. Hope you and yours are healthy and safe. Uh, we're all healthy and safe, thankfully, for now. <laughs> uh, Jody sent five euros, I think. Yeah, is that a euro? Uh, pounds? I don't know. How does that work? Some British person tell me how uh, how all that works. My love of video sent five dollars and says your two love your two cans makes my Friday. Um, I'm sorry I missed Friday, but I hope your Saturday will be made. In place of it. <laughs> uh, Homer sent $5 and said, Question, have you ever thought, Damn, what did I get myself into with this bird stuff? <laughs> Thanks for all you do. I had a subpar day, and watching the flock helps to keep me at least somewhat sane. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes... I, I don't regret having the birds, you know? Even if, even if I didn't... I mean, I had Ripley before I did any YouTube-related bird stuff. So, I've always wanted to have two cans in my life to some extent. And thankfully, thanks to you guys making it possible, I can have the birds I do and make a job out of it and dedicate my time to it appropriately. So, um, I wouldn't give it up at all. So I wouldn't say that I, I ever think, uh, oh, I do think that sometimes. Sometimes I have all, okay, Maeve's now taking a bath, so. <laughs> sometimes I uh, have all the birds out at once, and it's just me, and I'm like, why did I get myself into this when I, it's only me? <laughs> like, I feel like I'm chasing them around every five seconds and stuff, and I'm like, man, I want more of these things? What's wrong with me? So sometimes I think that, just because it's, uh, sometimes they're difficult to deal with on my own. Um, I think more so I would say that about, like, uh, being on YouTube and social media in general and having people kind of be a part of your life and, and thinking more like that, what did I get myself into about that sort of thing? So, uh, and less about the birds, because I'd want... Uh, you know, I'd want two cans to be a part of my life, regardless of what I did, which they were with Ripley. But um, I don't, you know, I never regret having them. I think it's a little overwhelming sometimes, but uh, I'm thankful that I have the job that I do, and it gives me the ability to do it appropriately and um, responsibly, you know, in a way I otherwise couldn't. Like, if I had a normal job, I couldn't handle having three toucans, especially two of which have, you know, special needs and, and, uh, requirements like Tupac. Like it would suck for Tupac to just be out, uh, unable to really move by himself all day. And that, that would really suck for him. You know, I wouldn't want to have him be alone all the time. So, um, but yeah, I guess sometimes I think that, but not, I would never give it up, you know? What was the other part of that? Oh. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we can make your day uh, somewhat sane, like you said. 
So, thank you for that. Kate says, sorry about the rough week for the roof repair fund. I don't have to have a second bar now for roof repair. <laughs> We're going to be adding bars all the way down to the bottom at this point. <laughs> Um, I think, I think insurance should cover a good portion of it, but uh, we're going to, I'm going to find that out this, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to figure all that out this month. So we'll see what happens for now. I, I mean, there's no major leaks. That's a good thing. It's not going to rain anytime soon as far as I know. So, uh, in due time, we'll figure out what's, what's going to happen, but you know. Sucks that it's just another thing to deal with, especially when uh, I'm already trying to deal with other stuff in regards to that. And now I'm seeing my uh, credits on the bottom are not lining up properly. Wait, why did I screw that up? Link the Discord below on both. Somehow I screwed up the labels. <laughs> it should say top bananas there on the, or no, over here. Instead of link to Discord. And there should only be a link to Discord thing up here. Ugh. Okay, that's fine. I'll, f <laughs> I'll fix it in a little bit. Uh, but thank you, Kate. Hopefully hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, let's see. Oh, Crabatic. Starting start the stream off right. Sent $100. Thank you, Crabatic. That's very generous. Um, but they say, hi, Brock. Here is future fruit funds. Can't wait to see the new house you eventually decide on. P.A.S. My... <laughs> P.A.S. See, that just shows how bad I am at pronouncing things, because I can't even say P.S. right. P.A.S. P.S. My name is pronounced Crab Attack. Crabatic. Crab Attack. Okay. Yeah, see? Even when I am, uh, fully alert, I can't pronounce things. So this is... But thank you for clarifying. Crab Attack sent $100. Very generous. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> much love to you. Philip Long uh, says, I love you and your bananas. You always make my day. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, let's see here. I'm a flamingo. Good to see you again. It says, hi, Brock. Sorry to hear you had such a horrible week. Hope things get better, and I look forward to seeing your flock grow in the future. What are you going to call the future bird sanctuary, by the way? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I guess it just depends on whether it's a uh, non-profit or not. I don't, know how, I don't know how feasible the non-profit stuff is in relation to me doing YouTube for a living. So there's a lot of question as far as that goes that I have to figure out. Unfortunately, I can't figure it out right now because of uh, the virus and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of on hold. And I'm just trying to focus on moving for now. But uh, if what I was thinking is if there's a nonprofit that I don't know what the sanctuary would be called. I don't I don't know if it even have a name, but the nonprofit would probably be called the Ripley Foundation or something like that. A Ripley the Ripley School for Gifted Toucans. <laughs> for needy toucans. We have like an X Men bird sanctuary for toucans. Oh man. Okay, let me, let me polish this off real quick. I don't know what that even means, but. Uh, Iarca 1820 says, Hey, again, good to see you, and birds are mostly okay. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, the donation. And uh, good to see you as well. Thank you for joining us. I hear. Beatrix banging around back there. I really want to change that stream label now. You know what? We're, you know what we can do. I'm gonna go fix the. I'm gonna go fix the stream label, or the label thingy for the for the for the thingamajig, and uh, I'll put the camera on Maeve while she takes a bath, and then I'll be right back. So.
that should do for now. here on the floor, courtesy of Maeve. Here's our blueberries. I get a towel now for all this. Sure are a messy bird. Oh, uh, Mabe, are you serious? Did you really poop in your bath water? What's wrong with you? Let's get all this water up. We're gonna have to pour that water out. Okay. Sanitizer. Okay, everything should be good now, hopefully. Oh, the camera is kind of. Hopefully that's better. Oh. What are we going to do with her? You guys like this shirt? You guys like this shirt or the, uh, the toucan only one from last week? Better. Both equally as dorky, but I'm wearing them for you guys, okay? <laughs> uh. 
Um, let's try to let's try to see what we missed here. Oh boy, where did we leave off? Oh, crab attack. No, Phil Long. Oh, I'm a flamingo. Okay, we got. Okay, we. I didn't miss that much. We're good. Um, Kevin Longhe says it's great to see you and the birds again. I always really look forward to these live shows at the end of the week. Um, it's good to see you again, Kevin. And uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for the the super chat. Very kind of you, and much love to you from all of us. And Kayla K sent twenty dollars. And Kayla says, "Hi Brock, I'm sorry to hear that you had a bad week and about the house damage setbacks. I hope that you feel better and are able to get some sleep soon. Much love to you and the burbs." Um, yeah, it's. You know, it could be worse. At least I have insurance and all that kind of stuff, so it could be worse, but I don't know. It's just been, there's been a lot of just stuff going on this week that sucked, I guess. Excuse me. But, um, overall things are looking good, so I just wish I, uh, I have, I don't know, like I, I have a, a bad, I think I have, I just have a hard time handling or or not handling hiding or not hiding but like holding in emotion type stuff so if i feel even a little bit anxious it just like really screws with me a lot <laughs> so it has a lot of effect on me unfortunately um but we're here so that's good and hopefully this coming week we will uh get back to normal so, you want a blueberry, Maeve? Are you going to preen the whole time? There you go. Let's see here. Paul Jacobson sent $5 with no comment. Thank you, Paul. I need to check PayPal. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Give me a sec. It always takes me a weird amount of time to check PayPal. <laughs> and make sure there's no comments associated. Okay, it doesn't look like anybody sent any comments with through PayPal. So I think we're good. Um, let me check, let me check the, the normal chat. Oh no, we just got another super chat. Uh, Jan Tiki, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, says I love your videos and toucans and I hope this will help. Uh, it will help, Jan. Thank you so much. Hopefully I pronounced your name properly. Uh, make sure you guys check out Discord. Wait, let's check Discord right now. Let's see if we got let's see if we got any new people. You wanna see Maeve? We have We have 133 online. I'm trying to see if we I don't know how many total we have. I think it's harder it's harder to check on your phone or on the phone. The last I checked we had almost like two hundred members, and that was before the stream, so we're getting there. Uh Discord isn't solely for gaming, by the way. Uh it's like it's just it's a place where we can all discuss birds or what, whatever anybody that watches the channel and is a fan of us here can there's a community of us we all talk about whatever we want a lot of it's bird talk but there's other stuff too 
and I'm, I'm involved on it. So it's kind of like this live stream, but in uh, text form, and it goes all day. But I'm not going to be as directly active in it as I am here, because I have other stuff going on throughout the day, but I do check it pretty frequently. And there's a lot of people on there to discuss things with. And you can post your fan art, or memes, or whatever you want. And if it starts doing successful enough, I'll start uh, doing videos reviewing them or something. So if we start getting enough submissions, we'll check that out. There you go. Do you want one of these? I see you looking at it. There you go. Uh, let's see. Oh, member count. We have 364 people on Discord now. That's pretty awesome. Well, it means we've gotten quite a few since this stream. We've gotten at least 100 or so from the stream. So, uh, Wait, did I miss something? How long have we been going for? Okay, 34 minutes. We might not do this stream as long as usual, but let's see how I feel. We'll go from there. Maeve, do you want this? Hey, come here. Look, I put some I put some drawstrings here for you. I know how much you love those. You don't want to play with that now? She loves pulling at drawstrings, like if you have a hoodie on, or like if I have uh, gym shorts on that has a string hanging off, she just sits there and pulls at it forever. So I got this like shoelace thing, and she likes to play with it, and I tied it around this branch, but she doesn't seem interested in it now for some reason. Maybe because she knows she's allowed to have it now. <laughs> Uh, Brianna Aaron, what's up Brianna, says, hang in there Brock, to quote a song I know, when life gives you limes, you make margaritas. Well, you have to have, what do you have to have? You have to have tequila for that first, though. <laughs> I do have some of that, though. But thank you, Brianna. And uh, thanks for modding the chat. Let me let me try to read and try my best to read some of the some of the uh, normal normal chats that uh, I don't always get a chance to read. No, oh, we did just get a thing though. Oh. It's Jan again. Let's see. There's a message here. Uh, you don't have to bother about pronouncing my name. I am from the Czech Republic, and I know that it is a problem for people who speak English to pronounce our names. By the way, I do not understand why Maeve is so hyper and Tupac is so calm. Uh, well, you know, if, if, you, uh, if you can spell it out, in a way that I can understand how to pronounce it, I will make it make an attempt. <laughs> uh, Maeve is so hyper because she is a healthy, normal, functional toucan, and that's how they normally are. But Tupac has a lot of health problems that prevent him from moving, much less being hyper. So he has uh, arthritis and. Uh, fused joints in his knees and ankles and atro atrophy in his muscles and uh, he has cataracts that doesn't really change his ability to move but he has he has a lot of issues that just keep him from being able to move normally like Maeve does that's why she's bouncing all over the place so Maeve is a functional toucan like if Tupac 
were healthy, he would act like Ripley did, which Ripley was equally as hyper as Maeve is. You want this blueberry? Come here. <laughs> Little hyper thing. You're shivering because you're all wet? <laughs> um... SH ask love your t-shirt where did you get it uh I got it a long time ago it's been probably six years maybe five six years I'm trying to remember I think it was on Amazon it had to have been on Amazon who make who makes it it's like it's the same people that make the uh you know the three wolf is it the three wolf moon shirt I can't remember the one like Dwight Schrute has in the office, and then uh, they have some of their shirts, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia with eagles on it. I have some of those as well because they're just silly; they look goofy. So they're all like this tie dye type of thing with some kind of like art that just looks—I don't know—it just looks so tacky. I love it. <laughs> oh, here's the brand right here. Uh, it's from the mountain. This was, oh, this is from 2013. So yeah, it is from quite a while ago. The mountain. Search, search the mountain bird shirt on Google or Amazon. Let me, I'm going to, I'm going to search it on my phone right now and see if I can find it. They have all kinds of, like, yeah, here we go. Oh, they don't have this shirt, though. They always have shirts like this. Let me show you. Uh, well, if you can see on my phone. Maybe if it'll focus. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> if I go back a little bit, will it work? Yeah. Just search search the mountain. Maybe let's do toucan shirt and see if that works. I'm not seeing it on Amazon anymore, but they might have it on... Yeah, see, like, they make the Three Wolf Moon t-shirt. And, um... I'm not seeing the toucan one anymore. Maybe Maybe parrot shirt. The company is called The Mountain, though. They have one, okay, they have one with... They have one with macaws on it. Two green wing macaws. And two African greys. The African grey one's kind of cool. Actually, both of these are kind of cool. I might have to get them. I don't know if you guys can see this. Man, I need to see... When I move, I'm going to get a... I'm going to set up some kind of way to do this where it's near or somehow I have access to my computer more directly so that if I what am I trying to say if I want to bring up something like this I can just show it actually on the screen here instead of trying to show you here that's what I would like to do in the future and my house just isn't set up for that is what sucks because my uh, the Ethernet or the modem is back by my computer, and I don't want to do any wireless stuff while streaming. So it would just be, I guess maybe I could get a laptop and do a um, do a remote access to my desktop. That might be a solution, and have a laptop in here. That way I can I can bring up Amazon or YouTube or whatever on stream. And we can look at everything together and watch everything together. If I if I have a picture I want to show, we can all see it at the same time. That's what I want to do. But uh, I'm not seeing the toucan shirt anymore. Let, let me Google it. They have the toucan. Oh no, they're unavailable. The toucan one, and I'm not sure about this one. 
Because I have one with just two cans on it. I'm just I'm trying to find the link so I can paste it into the into the chat for you. Uh, here we go. Uh, maybe this is the kids' version though. Crap. Um, man, why is this harder to find? <laughs> I thought it was gonna be. Well, anyways, if you just go go to Google, type in the mountain uh, parrot shirt or bird shirt, anything like that. And then uh, go to images and just look through the images or shopping and then try to find the one that matches. Oh, wait, here we go, maybe. Birds of the Tropics. That's what it's called. It's on back order, though. I don't know. It might be out of production by this point. It has been a while since I got it. But anyways, let's move on because we don't want to spend the entire stream talking about this this stupid shirt. <laughs> but you should be able to find it if you just Google the mountain tropical birds shirt or something along that line. Parrot shirt. Anything like that. Um, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, <laughs> Dionysus says I can send whiskey. Always helps me sleep. Uh, yeah, I have a, I have, I have Jack Daniels, but uh, you know, I don't want to rely, I don't want to rely on that to get to sleep. That sounds like a, uh, sounds like a bad road to go down. You want to jump down, buddy? Oh crap! You know what I need to do? I need to go turn the water off. See, this is how my tub got over tub got overflowed right here. I start things and I forget about them. There you go, babe. Fresh water. Okay. Uh, the Nick Nickinator uh, says, "Look at all those chickens." <laughs> That's what I always think when I have all the birds out at once. Look at all those chickens. Uh, Maeve is now perching on my guitar. She knows she's not supposed to do that. You know you're not supposed to do that, little stinker. Um, Colin Struten asks, where are toucans native to? It depends on what species you're referring to, because uh, Aracaris can go far up north to all the way to Mexico. Like maybe central Mexico at the highest. Uh, Beatrix's species goes uh, all the way up to southern Mexico, but mostly through Central America and northern South America. Very northern South America, like right where Central and South America meet. Uh, and then uh, Tupac and Maeve's species both live primarily in Brazil, but also other parts of South America, kind of scattered around. There's a little bit in the north, but most of the most dense population is probably near Brazil and uh, are not near Brazil, in Brazil, and near like Rio and the Amazon and all that kind of stuff, all the way down to the south, below there, all those southern countries. 
Don't do that. Come here. So uh, typically, depending on the species, there can be Araceres up very far north in Mexico. And maybe some species of toucan as well, but for the most part, they're central and South America. The, the big toucans, the, main, the rimpastos. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? The rimpastos genus, which is Maeve, Tupac, and, or Maeve, Tupac, and Beatrix's uh, genus. The big toucans, yellow and white throats, all primarily live in Central and South America. I'm not, I don't think there are any, there might be some in Southern Mexico, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, Toco toucans and red bill toucans don't, gar, don't go up to Central America though. What are you doing? Tupac's down there eating, and Maeve's up here eating. Mr. Jam Excess, again, coming in here with a $100 donation. Good to see you again. Uh, he says, sorry I'm late music stuff. What, uh, elaborate. Let's hear about your music stuff. I'm interested. But thank you. Thank you so much again for the very generous don donation it seems like uh, every time we have a stream uh he's in here being one of the top donators so thank you so much for your continued loyalty and for hanging out with us sh asks tupac's beak looks extra shiny today did you polish it uh, i put some coconut oil on it like an hour or so before the stream you want to come back up? I think he wants to come back up. Here, come here. There you go. Yeah, but he's just he's got some coconut oil on it. That's why it looks so shiny. But I did I did buff it with like a nail what are those called? You know the little uh, little rectangle things you use to buff your fingernails? I used one of those on his bill couple weeks ago and it has made it significantly more shiny but today it's extra shiny because of the coconut oil and I, I usually put that on a couple times a week on all the bird well not not uh I don't put it on Beatrix's because I don't want to freak her out because she's already <laughs> probably still mad at me from giving her medicine when I first got her but on Maeve and Tupac's beaks, I'll, I'll put it on a couple, two or three times a week to uh, try to keep it moisturized and stuff like that, keep it from drying out. Because it needs, it needs a lot of humidity to really keep its, keep its uh, health, health up. So I think it really helps. I started doing it with, I, did, I never did it with Ripley and her beak, her beak was good. So, uh, but, it doesn't hurt to do it, and it's, it certainly helps with hydrating the the um, keratin and stuff. You know, like when they put they'll put uh, oil around along your hairline or like uh, on your cuticles and fingernails to kind of try to keep it from peeling and drying out. Kind of a kind of the same concept. I think it really helps their beaks just overall. So. And Tupac already has had trouble in the past with his, when I first got him, with it drying out and peeling and all that kind of stuff. So, well, Maeve's not, Maeve's isn't even fully developed. Oh yeah, Maeve, Maeve's birthday is this week, guys. So next, next live stream, everyone make sure you come next weekend because we're going to, we're going to do a live stream for Maeve's birthday. She'll be one years old, or one year old, <laughs> excuse me. She'll be one year old this week, or this coming week, on May 5th. Yeah, is it May 5th? I think it is. We're not going to do the stream on May 5th, though, because I want everyone to be able to come. So we're going to do it Friday. But, um, yeah, she's one now. 
about to be one. She's having a good time preening back there, obsessively. <laughs> okay. Um, Curtis sent $10 with no comment. Thank you, Curtis. Mr. JMXS, again, sent $10. It says, I'm in the process of figuring out what kind of music I want to release as an artist. So far, I'm leaning towards some eerie metal stuff. Are you a, um, what do you play? Are you a guitarist or a vocalist or what? Just out of curiosity. Bassist, drummer, keyboardist. Are there keyboards in metal? I don't know. You know eerie metal sounds like it might have some synth stuff in it. based on its name. Okay, we're caught up on comments, thankfully. By the way, uh, make sure if, during the live streams you keep your comments uh, about these vi about this video, like while the, video, while the stream is live, uh, comment in the normal YouTube thing, because I'm not, otherwise I'm not gonna see it. So, I'm not saying don't talk about the video on Discord, because that's fine. But if you want me to see your comment during the stream, make sure you comment on YouTube, because I'm not going to be reading Discord at the same time as the YouTube chat during the stream. I'll, I'll read Discord afterwards, but I'm not going to be able to read it on, uh, on stream. Uh, Mr. Jam Excess again says, I play everything and I sing. Well, that's very impressive. Especially singing metal, because uh, my voice certainly couldn't do that. So, that's awesome. You'll have to send us a link to some of your stuff on here when you do it. Or when you figure out what you want to do. We'll check it out. Um... Do I drink moonshine? I, I I have had moonshine before, like legit moonshine. I don't have any right now, and I haven't had any in a long time. But I do like it; it's good. I'm trying to think if I could. I know the stuff that you get at like the store is not the same as. I don't think it's the same as like legit stuff like prohibition style stuff <laughs> but yeah i like it it's good i had well one was like a cherry one had a bunch of cherries in it and that was really good i do i, I like alcohol i don't drink it a lot so don't freak out but i enjoy i jo enjoy mixing cocktails and stuff like that and trying new things when i get the opportunity so but I don't drink that often. Is today Friday? No, it's Saturday. I was about to say, did I get my days mixed up and I accidentally did the live stream on the right day? <clears throat> um, I play I play the guitar. Everyone's, everyone's talking about music now. I play, I've played uh, guitar since I was 15, I think. So for about 13 years. And then I tried, I tried to pick up piano for a while, but um, it was difficult having the keyboard here because Ripley kept uh, messing with it and pooping on it, and then it just took up a lot of space. <laughs> So I'd like to I'd like to start playing the piano again someday or trying to. I think I could pick it up fairly quickly since I already have some knowledge of how music works, but um I don't I can't really sing though. My voice my voice is too deep and monotone. <laughs> Discord is not just for gaming. I know. It's surprising. 
It's not like it's not. I mean, there's servers on Discord for everything under the sun. So it's it's like it's almost like Reddit, but it's more of a chat room, I guess. Some sort of marriage between Reddit and uh, a chat room. Kind of like a forum chat room mix. Do I like Pokemon? I loved Pokemon since I was... Well, I loved Pokemon when I was a... How old was I? I was When I was a kid, when the first gen Pokemon came out in the United States, I was I loved Pokemon. And that love lasted a couple years, and then I got... That's the one, the one thing in my life that I got super interested in and ended up dropping at some point was Pokemon. Everything else I've kept my entire life. <laughs> Pokemon was the one thing I actually got tired of. Uh, when, But, I mean, I still, I guess I still enjoy it to some extent. Like, I liked Detective Pikachu and I played Pokemon Go when it was big, you know, a few years ago. And I can still appreciate it, but it's not like a big thing for me, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, uh, when I was a kid, around that same age, I loved dinosaurs, I loved birds, I loved uh, Alien and Predator, and movies, and uh, uh, Jurassic Park, obviously, I've loved most of my life, or all my life, because it was the first movie I saw in theaters. Back to the Future, I loved that when I was a little kid. All that kind of stuff, like, I guess all the pop culture loves uh stuck they stayed with me my entire life up until now and a lot of times as you've seen with birds they've escalated quite exponentially <laughs> but uh pokemon was the one thing i just never really kept up with i don't know why but i just eventually kind of got tired of it i think it's when the second gen pokemon started coming out i was just kind of like eh. i don't know it just didn't have the same feel anymore if that makes sense But, did I miss something? I missed a super chat? So everyone was talking about Toucanon and stuff like that now? There was no Toucan Pokemon back then. I know Toucanon now. But that's, that's, a fairly, that's a fairly new Pokemon from what I understand. It's kind of surprising they didn't make a Toucan Pokemon sooner, honestly. Can't, are you still preening? Usually after they, when they take a bath, they just preen until their feathers are dry. You want this blueberry? Hey. Look. Uh, which do I like better, Star Wars or Jurassic Park? I don't know, both have had pretty terrible movies as of late, so... <laughs> Depends on which ones you're uh, comparing. It's That's a hard to sit... Like, if I were to take the two best movies out of those franchises, it's, it's hard to... I don't know, that would be a hard comparison. They're both pretty close. I think... I think The Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie. By far. Um, I'm, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty much, it's one of the movies that gets closest to being perfect all around. I think there's some small things about Jurassic Park that I could maybe nitpick, but I don't think there, I don't think there's anything about Empire Strikes Back that I could really nitpick as far as the original theatrical cut goes. So, um, I don't know though, you know, I used to say like, well, you have to suspend your disbelief with Jurassic Park a little bit because nobody would continue being that dumb when it comes to uh, risking people's lives to make money. But then, you know, you have this whole virus thing going on and people are doing exactly that. So maybe it's more realistic than you think. <laughs> you know? 
Maybe it is realistic that somebody would uh, neglect people's lives and abuse science in order to make money. I guess that sounds more realistic now that I think about it, but that was one of those things where I was like, ah, I don't know, you have to kind of, because, you know, John Hammond was a, in the books, he was a huge a-hole, but in the movie they have him be a little more, uh, a little more uh, redeemable. Well, not even a little more, a lot more redeemable. You don't want this? You don't want that? Okay. We got a new chat. Uh, Tally says, Hi, Brock and the flock. Keep your head up. Everything will be fine at the end. Question, which two cans are behaviorally easier, males or females? I've had a couple people ask me this before, and I really don't have an answer. I've heard a lot of people say... I've heard mixed opinions, actually, because some people say... Or some of the breeders have said that males are more aggressive. But then I've also read that females are more aggressive, especially during the breeding season. And they actually bully the males. So... I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to say. Because Maeve's, Maeve's female... And she's super, she's super friendly and uh, pretty, I mean, she's not laid back, but she's very friendly. She won't bite or anything like that. Um, but Ripley um, was a female, and she, she would bite a lot of people. And there was, like, almost nothing you could do to stop it sometimes. So, and then Tupac, but Tupac is male, and he's super calm, but of course he has a lot of health issues. But then Beatrix is uh, bites me all the freaking time, and uh, she's female. So uh, I don't. I think I think it depends on the individual bird. I really I, I really do. I don't think it's I don't think it's a uh, gender issue when it comes to aggression. I think it just depends on that specific bird's personality. You might get really lucky and get a mave who's very friendly to everybody, and Maeve could change. When she goes through puberty all the way this year, she could get a little more aggressive. Hard to say. But, um, and Ripley was generally friendly to me, but there were, she had really, she had really crazy mood swings a lot. So, um, and that's, that's the toucan thing that people don't expect, are the, the, massive mood swings that aren't they aren't like parrot mood swings either because they don't you know for for a parrot I mean, if you mostly just don't approach it when it wants to be left alone you're going to be all right like you can read its body language and go okay it might it's probably going to bite right now so i'd give it a little space toucans will chase you down and try to bite you it's like chase you around the house and try to bite you so they don't they don't stand their ground and stay in their space they will come after you Uh, thankfully, my current bunch haven't been like that. Well, Beatrix has to some extent, but, uh, Maeve has not been like that, so. I'm not entirely sure if it's just a species-by-species species thing, or if it's a, uh, just a personality thing, you know? I'm, I'm leaning towards personality thing. I think there's enough similarities between the way each of the toucans I've had behave. They all they have similar characteristics like and interests, but different personalities if that makes sense. Like they like the same things mostly and act very similarly, but they have different personalities. Each of them do. But Maeve's Maeve's a good toucan though. She's very She's naughty, and she knocks things down uh, and breaks things and destroys things and doesn't sit still and gets into trouble all the time. But she's, she's very friendly to new people, and she doesn't bite, and uh, she's not really moody. You know, she's, she's pretty consistent as far as her mood goes. So she's consistently curious and destructive, but... <laughs> And hyper... But, oh, good lord, Maeve, what are you doing? 
Well, that blueberry went into oblivion. I'll have to find that later. But yeah. Okay. What? I'm curious why, Brian. I'm curious why, uh, what part of the new Star Wars movies gets on your nerves? Or people talking about it gets on your nerves? Is it because the movies are bad? Or, or does it get on your nerves because people say they're bad and you like them? Just curious. No judgment. I'm just curious. <laughs> um... Apache2895 says, have you seen the new published findings on how Spinosaurus likely looked like? Some beautiful stuff, actually. Yes, I have. I have been reading through that this week. Uh, looks very interesting. There are a lot more crocodilian than we thought during Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> but there's, so, there's a lot of interesting things about the Spinosaurus that... Well, the, doc, the whole documentary is probably outdated now, thanks to these findings. But... Um, something about the fossil was lost forever or it was unable to be accessed because it was I forget how the story goes i think maybe they dug it up there were sketchy circumstances around it being excavated originally or something along that line and the spell the skeleton wasn't really near near complete anyway it was very fragmented skeleton but that was the only specimen they had or one of the only specimens they had and uh, there was some debate over ownership of it, and they couldn't study it for a long time. I think that's how it, how it goes. But uh, I could be wrong about that, but it's really interesting to see how much that has evolved lately. And it's going to be even more interesting if one day we find a, <clears throat> a much more complete skeleton, uh, you know, closer to, like, Sue, the Tyrannosaurus, where it's, you know, really clear how the animal is put together. It's probably going to be difficult finding Spinosaurus if it lived in the water, though. It's, you know, all its bones were washed away or whatever if it died, so. But yes, very interesting stuff. I have been, I have been reading it. Carrie says Ripley was funny about whom she liked and didn't. You know, she... Ripley didn't like anybody that wasn't me. <laughs> or very rarely did she like anybody that wasn't me. Um, when people would come try to feed her when I was gone, it was a nightmare for them. It was an absolute nightmare. And I feel super bad about it. Because <laughs> she was not having anybody near her space when I wasn't there. And uh, she is not... She's very, They're very fast. So... Uh, Freddy Heineman asks, uh, love Brock and the flock. What is the best way to get your toucan used to friends, family, or guests? Uh, they really just have to spend time with them. Like just be, they, the, the birds have to kind of get used to their presence and know that they're not a threat to them. And then once that happens, they'll warm up to being more friendly to them. With Maeve, on the other hand, she'll just come up to whoever, she doesn't care who it is. She just comes up to whoever. So, uh, it's not an issue with Maeve at all, thankfully. She is very friendly to everybody, and I'm not sure if that's because maybe she was... I think maybe when she was hand-reared, she there were multiple people working with her, and that kind of maybe helped her um, learn to trust mul like multiple individuals rather than just one. But, uh, I don't know. Hard to, that might just be your personality, you know? Uh, give me one second. I have to fix the screen here. We need to update the, the bar also. Hold on a second.
Steve has been surprisingly good today about not pooping on things. Excuse me. She pooped in her water. And right here. But other than that, not too bad. I got, a, I got my steam cleaner in yesterday, finally. My new one, at least. I have one, but uh, the new one, I think, is going to be better. Okay, let me get back up here. Uh, Brianna is asking. Make sure this isn't too close. Can you guys hear the uh, vent, by the way, the fan, and the air conditioning? Just making sure it's not disrupting the the microphone, the microphone experience. <laughs> uh, Brianna's asking. To answer everybody's questions, it's a mixture of both. I like the Force Awakens. Oh, that's okay. He can have that. Haven't seen the others after. And the Facebook pages I follow get spammed with whining when the films are brought up. Um, you know, I really... I When the Force Awakens came out, I really liked it. And I was really excited to see what everything was... What was going to happen after everything. And, uh... I don't know. To put it... Uh, I don't, I don't want to be one of those snobby Star Wars fans, but uh, I really hate the Disney movies now. Just so much. <laughs> but the Clone Wars has been great. So the, the series, and I liked the Mandalorian. So maybe they're still good in Star Wars. I don't know. What do you think, Maeve? You think Star Wars can be salvaged? These, these are questions for two cans to ponder. I think there's still some salvageability in it. If they can get the right people in charge and quit trying to push a bunch of agendas on a fantasy movie. That should just be fun. It should just be fun for everybody. What are you doing? She's getting kind of a little blue, like a light blue stripe up the top of her Coleman there on the, on her beak, like at the base of it. Um, Debbie Putnam, good to see you again, Debbie. Says, glad you all made it safely through the bad weather. It's always good to hang out with you and the bananas on the live streams. Maeve gets into trouble a lot, but she is so adorable doing it. Yes, yeah, she is. Uh, thankfully, thankfully, uh, she's been pretty good today. So, she hasn't been getting into too much trouble today. I don't know why she's more calm than usual, but. Are you calm today? You can play with that string. That's there for you. I'm trying to see what she'll do. Oh, there she goes. Oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, thank you, Debbie. And it's good to see you back. Um, okay, everyone's saying they can hear the AC, but it's fine. Beatri today's Beatrix's off day. 
She'll be back. She'll be back next week. She's fine. I can hear her back there. I think she's probably washing her beak or something. I can hear her scratching it a bunch. Um, Ren Peach says, Hi, Brock's Flock. Give them blueberries for me. Thank you. I will give them blueberries for you. Here's one for Tupac. There you go, buddy. And I don't know if Maeve will take one right now. We'll see, though. Come here, Maeve. Look. Hey, look. You want this? Come on. There you go. Oh, man. My back. My neck. My, no, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Some of you guys know where I was going there, probably. Um, I'm a flamingo. I'm, blah. Man, I'm a flamingo. Says, how is Beatrix and will the Toucan costume be making an appearance in any future streams? Uh... I still have I still have the the mask thing, although Maeve did tear it up quite a bit. We'll see. I still have it, and I guess maybe uh, if we do something towards towards uh, Halloween this year, we'll see what happens. I still have it. I'm not planning on get rid of getting rid of it, so. I don't know. I hate that, uh, I hate that, uh, the chat's always a little behind, or the stream, the actual stream is a little behind what I actually say. So when I look at the chat, I don't even remember what I said. Uh, I said that in reference to what the chat's saying, because it was like several minutes ago. Yeah, the last, I, I will agree with that, The Last Jedi is probably the worst Star Wars movie, and one of the most offensive pieces of anything ever created, <clears throat> in my opinion. Oh, battery died, hold on. tell you I'll tell you how oh crap we got Tupac out of frame now there we go The Last Jedi is the only movie that I didn't have a denial period about hating <laughs> like uh, with Spider-Man 3 and even the Star Wars prequels to an extent I had a period of denial that I tried to convince myself that they were good before I was like, nah, these things suck. What am I talking about? And like I went I went to see The Last Jedi at midnight in full full Luke Skywalker costume. Twenty how old was I at the time? Twenty seven? Twenty seven year old man. <laughs> My freaking lightsaber and uh this girl I was seeing at the time. And uh I went to go see it, and I was super stoked about it. Luke is like my favorite character of any movie ever, and I was so happy to see him again, and I was like, this is going to be awesome, 
and uh, oh, man, there wasn't there wasn't even. An, I just started getting like once I the movie started getting close to the climax, and I realized this is the movie, and it's not going to have anything redeeming about it. I just started getting irrationally angry, and as soon as I left the theater, I just started cursing it, and I hated it immediately. I didn't have to read anybody's review or anybody else's opinion. I just immediately hated it. I didn't have to see anything telling me why it was bad. I just hated it immediately, and I sold a lot of my Star Wars stuff right afterwards because I was so... I hated it so much, and I've loved Star Wars like my entire life. It really sucked. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the prequels either. But I do like the Clone Wars quite a bit. So, there's some redeeming qualities. I I think the Star Wars prequels are redeeming or are, are redeemable to some extent because of how good the the Clone Wars has been, the animated show. But I don't think there's anything possibly redeeming about the whole sequel trilogy era now like it's just when i was playing star wars battlefront and they would just the, the sequel trilogy era would come up i would just quit the game and go find a new one like it's just there's nothing even unique about it to like you know it's not like the droids and the clones or there's like anything unique about it's just a complete it's a copy of the original trilogy with all the soul sucked out of it and like our heroes that we look up to like kids look up to these heroes and now they're all failures like han solo decided to divorce his wife and abandon his son and now just go back to being a smuggler after his whole thing and leia leia's not anything like she's just a, still a general after all these years she didn't do anything else and then luke decided to go die on an island and just give up the jedi order and all that stuff it's just like our, our heroes are failures that's what we have to look up to <laughs> Oh, man. Don't, don't get me started talking. Oh, wait. I already got started talking about Star Wars. <laughs> I was going to say don't get me talking start, or started talking about Star Wars because uh, I'll get riled up about it. I already did. Too late. There you go. But like I said, I don't hate Star Wars now for the sake of hating it because I, lo I love the Clone Wars, especially this past these past few episodes and I liked Rebels for the most part and I liked the Mandalorian for the most part so you know I, it's just I didn't really like any of the spinoff movies either uh, a lot of people say Rogue One is the best one and that might be I guess that's true on a technical level but it's like I don't know it's just like uh Congratulations on being the, the skinniest guy at Fat Camp, you know, like. <laughs> Maybe that's a little crude to say. I couldn't think of, like, any any better way to say that. It's like, wow, you're the best movie out of a bunch of crappy ones. Congrats, I guess. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, guys. Hopefully I didn't offend anybody. I'm sorry. If I did. If, it, if you like the movies or anything, it's your right to like them. I've got nothing against you. You know. Glad, I'm glad you can enjoy them because I, I don't. I wish I could. Maeve, come here. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay, we didn't lose too many viewers during that rant. <laughs> Start a show where you are Tupac, and he reviews stuff, and you're his voice. It's not a bad idea. Toucan movie reviews. There's so many other channels out there that just do it so much better. Like, I don't know. I could never beat a channel like Red Letter Media if I did movie reviews because they, they just have the market cornered as far as that kind of stuff goes. 
I don't think there's anywhere else to really take that sort of thing. There's so many channels that do it. Hey, you want that? But I do love talking about movies, and I do love movies, so. I can be... I can be mean. I'm sorry, guys. I can be mean sometimes. Especially when it comes to movies. <laughs> I can give a good rant. I, I love the original trilogy the most. Especially The Empire Strikes Back. So. But I think... I don't think that Star Wars is completely creatively bankrupt. I think there's still hope, uh, thanks to the cl the Clone Wars and stuff. And then people like Dave Filoni and jo John Favreau that really love Star Wars and clearly put effort into making what they did. And I, you know, I don't think the Mandalorian was perfect. And there's a lot of stuff I'd change about it, but there was a clear love and dedication and effort put into it and like a love for the original movies and the franchise and care that I just I don't think existed I, the the sequel movies just all seem like soulless husks of cash grabs where none of the protagonists have to go through any sort of struggle or trial and I guess I guess you could say Luke went through struggles and trials in the sequel trilogy, but like the, he didn't handle it in the way that you would think Luke would do it. So, but the main character Ray, and you know it's not just because she's a woman or anything. Because I was really excited to hear, actually before Disney even bought, before Disney even bought Star Wars. My friend and I would talk all the time about if they made sequel movies, and I would be like, dude, they need to do, like, they need to have a woman this time, like, as the protagonist. Because it would just be, it would be, uh, I don't know, it would be different enough to where it would make it seem a little more fresh, especially if she was, like, I was expecting her to be, like, Luke's daughter or something like that. Maybe Luke reformed the Jedi Order and solved some of the issues that they had during the Clone Wars and made a reformed Jedi Order or something like that. That's kind of what I was, I was expecting out of the sequel trilogies. And, like, for the most part, I was happy with The Force Awakens when it came out. Because I was like, well, they still we still have a lot of questions that aren't answered, and we don't know where they're going yet. And the movie was entertaining, so we'll give it, give it the benefit of the doubt, even though it did copy the Death Star for the third freaking time. But I wanted a female protagonist in the sequels. And it's not just because she's a woman. She just like doesn't have any problem doing anything in the movies, and it doesn't add it doesn't add any tension or any uh, suspense or any sort of message. Like you can't even with the Star Wars prequels, as bad as they were, you can t I can tell you what the message of the movies are and why they were made and what they wanted to say. You know, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, <clears throat> it's pretty clear with those movies, like what the filmmakers wanted to say or not the, the filmmaker, George Lucas, wanted to say with the prequels. You know, even if they were bad movies, there was a message behind it. But with the sequels, like, what what is the message exactly? Like, I don't think there's any moral to the story or message or anything encouraging or, you know, it's just like... Make things up as you go, I guess. <laughs> It really sucks that they wasted Adam Driver too, because I think he did a great job with Kylo Ren, and I liked Finn's. I liked Finn and Poe and Kylo Ren and The Force Awakens, and it, they didn't. They didn't do anything with them. It just kind of sucks. Or do anything different with them, I guess. I don't know. It's so much wasted potential, and we'll never get Carrie Fisher back to be Leia, and that sucks even worse. I'll nerd out for you guys. I'm 
and try to oh I missed something here we go uh, Nikki f88 says there should be two cams so we can see Beatrix too um, I thought about doing that but then how like how would we split the screen space up you know I guess I could put I guess I could put her up like in the corner here maybe but she doesn't or like Man, this is so hard, like, it's all mirrored. There we go. <laughs> but she doesn't stay still. It's a big, giant, you know, cage. And she doesn't stay in one place. So, uh... I don't know. It's hard to do, uh... We'll have, we'll have Beatrix out next week. And she, we're just gonna have to be patient and let her... You know, it's gonna take time for her to really be able to be out amongst everybody here and I don't I don't want to I don't want to excuse me I don't want to stress her out just for the sake of the channel as much as I want the channel to grow and for you guys to all be happy my main priority is with making sure the birds are healthy and happy and not stressed out Maeve what did you just do stop dropping blueberries everywhere I'm gonna have to find those now. That's gonna be a pain in the butt. There's no telling how many freaking blueberries are under my couch. <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out when we move. Oh my goodness, Maeve. <laughs> Here. Are you gonna eat that or just drop it on the floor? Let's see. Let's pl place your bets, everybody. Okay, she ate it. We're good. Uh... Sue Kamar sent a dollar ninety nine with no or just with a little gif. Thank you, Sue. Oh, I should freaking check the stream labs before I forget. I gotta update the freaking bar too. Man. All over the place today. Curtis sent five dollars. And says, Palpatine's lightning in the sky was the only super cool thing about it all. But it mudded and confused an already messed up trilogy. Why Why was Palpatine able to do that in the first place? Why, why could he shoot lightning into the sky all of a sudden? He could never do that before. He could shoot a singular person with lightning. Or maybe possibly a group of people. A small group of people. But he's shooting it into the sky and blowing up a bunch of spaceships all of a sudden? Like, that isn't... <laughs> uh... I'm going to start cursing if I keep this going. This, this channel is going to change its rating from PG to PG-13 real quick. We start talking about Star or keeps talking about Star Wars. No, I'm kidding. We can keep talking about Star Wars. Just uh I think that's the only one I missed. I I want I didn't even want to go see the Rise of Skywalker, but my friend baited me into it by giving me a free ticket. And I was so I was like, "Okay, I'll go." And uh I you know, I don't usually I try not to be that guy in the theater but when when at the beginning of the movie when kylo walks into uh <laughs> when kylo walks into um palpatine's new lair secret sith lair that on a planet we've never heard of uh <laughs> and they had a bunch of snoke like botched snoke clones in, in a vat i just i started laughing like <laughs> Cause it was like it was like something like out of Rick and Morty. Like Rick would have in his basement, like a bunch of botched clones of some kind of weird experiment that he was trying to like talk or try to manipulate some kid with across the, across the galaxy with these botched clones. It's just so freaking ridiculous and stupid. It's like, how can we explain Snoke? Oh, let's just put a bunch of botched clones of him in a vat in Palpatine's lair and not say anything else about it. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Ugh. Lord help us. Um 
Wait, let's let's update the little bar real quick. I gotta, I gotta calculate what what YouTube takes away here. Okay. So. Two two nineteen plus two forty. I'll I'll get I'll read your comments here in a second, guys. I want to update the bar real quick though. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Wait, what the heck? What was the... Okay. I keep, forget I keep forgetting what the total is. Man, I suck with numbers. It's so bad. And my memory sucks too, which makes it even worse. Wait, was it... See, I just looked at it and I already forgot it again. Okay, there we go. There's, what, 31 days in more? Or, what is it? Freaking May now? It's May already? Okay. Alright, we're, we're updated now. We're good. Uh, Maeve just took a nice poop. Fantastic. Thank you, Maeve. Appreciate that. Um... Oh, Ren, Ren Peach says, uh, did you get my email of the song about the cans I did? I did not. What Did you send it to um, the email on Instagram? I might have to look through my spam folder because a lot of stuff gets filtered. But I will, after the stream, I'll check my, I'll check and make sure I didn't miss anything. You want to come down? Come here. No, careful. And Tupac's little eye patches around it, or his little the little skin patches around his eyes have been brightening up lately because we've been hanging out in the sun a lot. He sat out. He sat outside in the sun while I was cutting branches on all the trees around my house. Uh, you want me to pet you now? Why don't you get some food first, and then I'll pet you. You've got little pin feathers on your head. Okay. Tupac is eating blueberries and pellets right now. He might want to drink a water, though. Come here. Oh, careful. Um... Okay. Uh, Curtis D says he was on the Sith home planet, so lots of power. I don't know. Yeah, but the Sith home planet was Malachor, based on. Was it Malachor or was it uh, Moraban? Or was. I don't know. It's hard to even keep track now because they erased all the old expanded universe, and I think that was Korriban back then. And now it's Moraban. And this was a made up planet that had never been in any previously mentioned stuff I think they said that he had somehow channeled the power of all living Sith or something, or not all living Sith but the spirits of Sith long dead but they never, ex oh god <laughs> that was a big hop but they never explained um, they didn't explain anything in that movie let's get real, I've only seen The Rise of Skywalker once so, but it didn't seem like they explained any part other than wanting to do the whole uh, I am inevitable, I am Iron Man moment, but Star Wars version, copying it, and just saying, I'm all the Sith now all of a sudden. 
I, I, I don't know. I thought maybe they might... I'm trying to remember if there was some kind of weird retcon that they did in the novel afterwards that some something popped up. Because they did some <laughs> retcon of his son. They're like, everyone was worried that Palpatine was like, uh, you know, doing the dirty with some ladies and his uh, wrinkly old raisin face. <laughs> everyone was like, oh man, does that mean Palpatine and bangs? <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, oh, oh no, we better retcon that and say, uh, another botched clone. That's what his son was, another botched clone. How many botched clones can we fit in one movie? Here's another one. And then that somehow, Ray, Ray is the daughter of Palpatine's botched clone, so she's his father or he is her father grandfather at the same time or something half half father full grandfather so he is he's he's about 100 150% grandfather <laughs> yeah it's crazy isn't it Maeve? They didn't know, they just, all they wanted was flashing lights and stuff to distract us, didn't they? That's why they did it. Remember this guy? Remember this guy from the other movies? Maybe if we shove him in front of your face, you'll forget about how bad the movie is. Remember how, remember how awesome he was in Return of the Jedi? Remember that? Remember berries. Okay, <laughs> I'm re like <laughs> we've lost like 20 people in the stream now. And it could just be because we've been going for like two hours, but you know. Oh, does the new Rick and Morty start this weekend? I didn't know that. Did you just poop? freaking pooped she's been eating blueberries now she's gonna poop everywhere i didn't know rick and morty was starting back this weekend but that's great to know uh Darth, wait, Darth Smog in a bathrobe. I don't know what that is. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks for reminding me that Rick and Morty comes back this weekend, though. What if Tupac just drinks Coca Cola? He will not drink Coca Cola. I will be sure of that. Sparkling water is one thing, but it's just water with carbonation. I'm not going to give him any uh, sugar. Especially since they're so... Maeve, what are you doing? I need like a million cameras around here. So you guys can see what she's doing all the time. She's like up on the blinds right here. Like, very uncomfortably. <laughs> Get down from there. Okay, let's let Tupac back up. Thankfully, I have been able to find uh, papaya lately. So, that's good. Okay. Ooh, I just like, I think I just spit out a little bit. Do you know, uh, Vaves says, do you know the Jar Jar Binks Sith Lord theory? If yes, would you have liked it? Um, I, I know the theory. 
I do I do think there's probably something to that theory to an extent where they were planning on doing something more with Jar Jar's character later in the movies, but because people hated him so much, they changed that plan. I'm not sure if that was uh, a Sith being a Sith Lord or not. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, Jar Jar doesn't really get on my nerves as much as other people, to the same extent at least. Like, I think it was more just trying to remember all my opinions on the Star Wars prequels now. It's been so long since I've seen them. Um, I, I think there's probably something to that theory, but maybe not to the same extent that the theory suggests that he was, you know, uh, a Sith Lord. But I do think it's a fun theory. And I've seen... Look at Maeve back there on their fridge, top left corner. I don't know what she's getting into. Uh, what was I saying? Oh man, I lost one. Oh god. Okay, she's good. Oh, the video where they like say Jar Jar's doing these like things and it, it seems like he's using the force. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's funny because you can explain it seems like he's using the force or whatever or doing these like unbelievable things but it's really just bad writing <laughs> it's just really bad writing but you can easily explain it by saying he was using the force and I find that part of it funny but I don't think it was intentional that they were trying to imply that he was able to use the force to some extent I think that he probably would have been a bigger villain or something coming into episode two or three if people had been more receptive to him uh not not a villain to the extent of like a sith lord but like someone more prominent in the plot that was probably being manipulated by palpatine because they do have him be manipulated by palpatine to vote to do a vote of no confidence for uh chancellor valorum and to get palpatine into office so they can uh authorize the use of the clones and all that so i think but i think there was more to that originally than what they ended up using if that makes sense i think it was really streamlined and they did like as little jar jar as humanly possible but i think the intent was always to have him be some be a moron like a good-hearted moron that was easily manipulated by somebody like palpatine so to get more power and we will come back to the comments in a second. I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, clean up the poo poo. Hold on. Hey, what are you doing? Are you being naughty? You were being good earlier. Are you being are you being bad? Why are you being so bad? Why are you being bad? We'll come back. We'll come back to the uh comments in a second.
Um, let me try to find where I was here. I think I might have missed the super chat. Let me see. Oh, I missed SH's. SH says, uh, Disney Star Wars analysis equals spot on. You should make a sister channel for movie reviews. Um, I might, you know, I might, I might expand to other avenues on YouTube in the future. I think for now, it might, it's probably more wise to focus all my efforts on this channel. And then once this channel gets big enough, I can bum some of my own subscribers and <laughs> make, make other channels like gaming ones or movies or whatever in the future. But I think it's better to just focus that energy on them or on this channel for now. But I do like, I do like that stuff. I like talking about that stuff too. And it might help mix up the whole YouTube thing if I have other, <coughs> excuse me, Ooh. If I have other types of videos to do. You know, uh, someone was saying they thought the Gungans were a cool concept. You know what's odd to me about the Star Wars prequels is how freaking racist <laughs> a lot of the aliens are so racist. <laughs> like, just unbelievably racist. Like, especially the uh, Nemoidians. Are they Nemoidians or Cato Nemoidians? I think they're just called Nemoidians. The... They, they speak with, like, a heavy Japanese accent. <laughs> and then, like, Watto, uh, the Troidarian, is that what it is? A Troidarian? Watto is just so freaking racist to Jewish people. Like, I can't even believe they got away with that sort of thing. It's so racist. <laughs> I can't believe nobody really talks about it either. And uh, our Jar Jar is pretty racist to, like, Jamaicans, too. Like, or all the Gungans are, for that matter. I'm trying to think of all the other weird stuff they had in the prequels. I think it was specifically mainly just the the episode one. But there was just so many, like, just blatantly racist things. that Like, I, it just baffles me how nobody ever really talks about it. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't imagine that sort of thing happening nowadays and them getting away with it the way they did <laughs> oh man um trying to make sure I didn't miss anything Okay, we got to the poop intermission. Let's continue. Do a do a my two cans reacting to Predator movie because the sound they make is literally the Predator. I've been playing uh, Predator Hunting Grounds, uh, ga the game, lately, and uh, I play it. And all the birds sit back there where my computer is when I play it, and sometimes Beatrix, especially Beatrix, sounds the most like the Predator. They make noises, and I'm just like, and like I can I can hear it. It sounds like it's coming from the game. <laughs> I thought about doing a stream, doing that game, but it's just so gory, and there's so much language and stuff in it that I just I don't know if it would be appropriate for this channel. Unfortunately, I did. Uh, there's there's a, um, there's a uh, mod pack for Minecraft that adds a whole bunch of exotic birds to the fauna, uh, including, or to the mobs, I should say, not the fauna, including toucans. So it might be fun to do a Minecraft stream and we'll try to find, we'll try to find toucans in the jungles or something. I haven't played Minecraft since like alpha, but Maeve, yeah, Maeve did throw something off the fridge earlier. It was, she likes to pull the, the dry erase marker back there. Like, I have a dry erase board on the fridge, and there's a little marker that's magnetic next to it. And she likes to pull that off. And she will, she'll take it over here, 
and she'll either drop it on the floor or she'll go over to her water dish back there. Oh, back, back there. That one. And uh, she'll drop it in the water. And then I have to wait for the marker to dry off and the eraser to dry off. <clears throat> and it's, uh, you know, it's irritating, but it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, Neko Gecko asks, would you or have you ever keep, ever kept, would you keep or have you ever kept reptiles? Yes, I have kept many reptiles, especially snakes. Uh, and turtles as a kid, I'd have, I had lots of box turtles. But I had a lot of snakes as well in my teenage years. Um... I love I do I love reptiles I especially love snakes, but uh, I probably wouldn't I don't think I'm gonna get another one at least not any time in the near future I just don't see the reason to and um, I don't want to mix them with the birds just in case because I I really like the bigger snakes like uh, Burmese pythons and and boas and uh, stuff like that so but I just don't. I would rather focus my efforts on the toucans. I don't want to. I don't want to mix too many different animals together. I don't really think that's the best idea. Um, like you know those channels that have a million different types of animals, and they do videos with each different type of animal, but they don't. I don't know. It just never seems like they can focus their attention on the animal. Like they can't give their full effort and attention to the animal the way it deserves because they have so many different requirements spread out for all different types of species and uh, I just don't I don't know I just don't I don't feel like that's right I feel like it's I'm not saying that people don't the people that do that are all bad by any means but I'm just saying that like it just it seems like a better idea to me to focus all your effort and, and attention especially if you have a YouTube channel where people come to you and they want to know information about them and stuff like that and uh, how to care or how to care for them, or uh, just kind of be live vicariously through you. I think it's just better to focus that energy on one type of animal, so that you can really get that nailed down, the care of that one type of animal n nailed down, and make sure they have the best quality of life. Because there's channels that do just snakes, and they give them a good quality of life. But if they started mixing a bunch of birds and stuff up with that. Uh, I don't know. It just it changes the whole dynamic. I think. I think I'd rather just stick to two cans. But that's just my personal conviction. I don't think. Although I do roll my eyes at a lot of those channels that clearly just get a bunch of animals so they can do stupid clickbait videos like that. And don't get me wrong, I do clickbait videos. I know. But I'm just saying, like, I don't ever want the. Uh, what am I trying to say? The. Uh, I don't want to ever do that sort of thing at the expense of the animal's well-being or quality of life, you know. So I want to be able to provide them the best possible life. And uh, I keep toucans because I believe I can do that. And if I had other animals, they may inadvertently get neglected because I prefer working with toucans, you know. So, you know, I don't know. And, you know, snakes aren't social. They don't need a lot of attention, but still. I just, I just prefer to stick to toucans. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. But I do love, I do love reptiles, and I especially do love snakes, so. Ugh. Um, I will, I have a Twitch account. It is in the description. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's there, and if enough people follow or whatever the thing is on Twitch, I'll start. I'll start. I'll start doing more gaming streams on there, specifically, as to not mix up any sort of potential gore or language uh, with this channel. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> 
if it seems like it would be worthwhile to do. Because otherwise I'd just rather do something like this or, or make another video for the channel. But we'll, we'll see what happens. I do, en I do enjoy doing these streams a lot, though. I really like being able to interact with you guys and talk to you and, like, you know, making videos is fun and everything, but there's something different about being able to directly interact with people who view uh, our stuff, and uh, I think there's something unique and valuable there that is not, not that it's uh, more valuable, or uh, it is in a way, but uh, I mean, obviously the other videos have probably more reach, um, because they're 10 minutes long or whatever, they're more accessible to more people, but um, I do, I like doing streams a lot, so I'd like to do more of them. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anything. Would I get a monkey as a pet? No. Especially... See, here's the, here's the thing, and don't take this the wrong way, Ren Peach, but this is the thing I want to avoid right here. Um, they say, would you get a monkey as a pet? I watch a channel that has a pet monkey, and it would make your channel a lot cooler. Uh, my goal is not to make my channel cooler. You know, I, I want my channel to be successful, and it helps me that it, it, if it's successful, and it helps the birds if it's successful. But getting an animal just to look cooler, I think is a very, very dangerous and slippery slope, and I don't think it's right. Do, like buying an animal specifically for clout, I don't like that. And that's why I think a lot of those, I, I don't have a favorable opinion on a lot of those channels that have multiple animals and hundreds sometimes of animals. And a lot of times it seems like they say, oh, such and such has this successful channel over here with a monkey or with whatever animal, insert animal here. And they had a viral video. I'm going to get one of those and try to recreate that success so I can get more clout. And that, my goal is not to gain more clout here. It's just to I don't, provide some sort of, well, first of all, it's to make sure they have a happy and healthy life. But secondly, you know, uh, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, sacrifice the well-being of the animals and expense or for my audience, if that makes sense. Like my priority is with the, the birds and I'd rather, or with the animals in general, cause like, it wouldn't be a responsible thing for me to get a monkey or something that I know, I don't know a lot about it. And mixing another type of animal with a toucan is a whole other can of worms that's just, you know, each of these animals needs individual attention and a specific amount of care. I, I really, you know, this is something I should write down all my thoughts on and not try to rant on a live stream, but I'll try to say what I've, how I feel about that sort of thing. But my main point is that, like, I don't want to buy an animal for clout or anything like that. Because that's, a lot of times, that's, a, well, toucans, too, and this has happened. They're like, oh, toucans are getting a lot of attention. And maybe part of that is because of me. I don't know. Uh, they're like, oh, a toucan got a lot of it, views with this video. Well, let's get a toucan and mix it in with everything else. And I just, I don't know. I don't like that sort of thing. I'd rather, I don't want to, I don't want anything to ever be about clout or attention or views. If I, if I get views and attention because I, I'm taking good care of my animals, that's what I want to be known for. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. So, uh, it wouldn't be responsible for me to get a monkey or anything like that. It wouldn't be the right because I, I wouldn't be able to provide it. I wouldn't be able to provide both that animal and my current ones, the proper amount of attention if I had both of those things. And it's not fair to either one of them. Now, if there, there could be a channel like mine that does primates, and that would be more suitable. You know what I mean? Because they know more about primates. I know more about toucans. Better to just stick to your niche, niche, whatever you want to say, and um, do the best you can there. You know what I mean? That's, that's my opinion, at least. So, hopefully that makes some sense. I know it's kind of like... Uh, ranting a little bit, but
what is my night ritual for my birds? <clears throat> well, uh, usually Maeve starts getting sleepy around nine, eight or nine p.m., and then I'll probably wait till about ten to put her up, maybe nine or ten to put her up. Um, and then same with Beatrix if she's out at the time. Usually she goes up a little earlier though if she's out. She goes up closer to like seven or so. Uh, they get first. I'll feed them about six or seven. They'll get sleepy about eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Uh, Beatrix and Maeve go up at that point once they start getting sleepy. Sometimes there's exceptions, but usually that's the case. And then, but Tupac stays up with me always and goes wherever I go in the house. So if I go and sit in the other room, he'll come with me and he'll sit on a stand. But if I, if I go to sleep in my room, he has a perch back there, he comes with me, and he sleeps in there. So, um, Maeve used to do that same sort of thing, but I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave Beatrix by herself. I, you know, I'd rather them kind of be able to roost together, and f I think they might feel a little more secure if there's more than one of them in the room together when they sleep. So, uh, I've been, I've been having Maeve sleep in her enclosure where, like, before I got Beatrix, she would sleep, Maeve would sleep in my room with me and Tupac, but now, because she had a little perch up on the, higher up on the wall. But since I've gotten Beatrix, I've been, what are you doing? You just hop over here really quick, don't you? Come here. But since we've gotten Beatrix, I let Maeve and her kind of sleep together. So that I'm hoping that might make Beatrix feel more secure and maybe might strengthen their bond together. Because if, if she can get a bond with Maeve, I think maybe she might be a little more willing to trust me. Because Maeve trusts me. So. Um, let me go through the comments. I think we're going to wrap the stream up here in a second. So we, we're going to go over two hours, which was longer than I was expecting. But we're going to cut this one a little bit short. Just because I am really tired still, even though I am ranting a lot. That's probably why I'm ranting so much. I don't have the governor on my brain right now telling me not to rant on live streams <laughs> about Star Wars. <laughs> oh, man. Primates should never be pets. Uh, I probably agree with that. Uh, I, and my, but my personal opinion is I wish toucans weren't pets either. And, uh, you know, they're exotic animals just like primates are, and they require very specific care. And there's, there's less known about toucans than there is known about primates also. So uh, that's why I just don't like to mix... I just don't feel it's right to mix too many of those different types of animals together under the same. Maybe if you have multiple people living in the house, that might be a different story. You know, like if you have if you have a wife and and children or something like that, where or each member of the family can give the animals more specific attention, that might be a little that might be more okay. Or maybe even if, if you have uh, a lot of money and you have a staff or something like that, you know, might be a different story. But, uh, you know, you really, like, with toucans, at least for me, like, there's a lot, there's not just, like, I didn't just Google care sheet on Emerald Forest website and read that, and then that's where I stopped, you know? Like, there's a lot of uh, peer-reviewed articles and scientific studies and observations and wild uh what do they call it, like uh, field journals on toucans that I've read and, and watched so many videos of them in the wild and, like, stuff that you really have to, like, like, even articles dating all the way back to the 60s and 70s. I have a book. I have a book on keel build toucans from the uh, 1890s, I think. I think that's when it was printed or first published. It was, like, in 1890. It was one of the first, like, observations of our field journals of keelbilled toucans and then I have an Oxford book on uh, the remphastids and their you know uh, Araceres toucanets and then toucans 
and then also there's barbettes and uh, yeah, barbettes in there, honey guides maybe. But I mean, I didn't look at the other, I didn't look at the barbette stuff and all that though. I just looked specifically at the toucans. There's just a lot of stuff that I've read that's like stuff that people wouldn't. It's not simply in a book or a care sheet or that sort of thing. And I've adapted my way of keeping the birds here based upon that information that's not really as readily available to the public, if that makes sense. Um, hopefully that's making sense. Like I really, I go through a lot of effort to try and find and scrape every single possible thing, even if it's outdated, to try to see if there's anything new I can learn about them and maybe uh, use to improve their lives and or understand them a little bit better, you know, in captivity. And it's helped me to understand them a lot. That's part of the reason that I've decided to kind of let them fence and stuff like that, where I think any other toucan owner would probably like try to discourage that behavior. Um, but I kind of, I kind of just let it happen because I think it's a natural part of their uh, social structures and they do it in the wild and they don't kill each other. So I've never seen any evidence of a toucan killing another toucan unless it's uh, a mother or a parent uh, potentially cannibalizing a, an egg of their, their own egg or their own hatchling that was unfit for survival or maybe taking it and dropping it on the ground because it's not fit for survival. They'll do that sort of thing. But I've never seen like adult toucans prey upon each other or kill each other. Uh, I think fencing is just a natural part of their social structures, and that's why I kind of let Beatrix and Maeve kind of figure that out for themselves. And, and I don't interfere with that unless there's, it seems like it could be a problem. And it's never been a problem, you know? At first, it seemed like it might have been. Like in that first time I introduced them together, it was a little uh, unnerving. But after they've gotten to, since they've gotten to know each other or know each other a little bit better, they do it normally, like you would see in wild, even though they're different species, they do it in a way that um, you would observe with wild toucans in the same flock. And I think it's uh, I think it's an important part of their structures in the flock. And the same with like how they interact with me and me trying to show them and kind of, you have to kind of come down to their level and get on their level and speak in their language, you know, because you can't expect them to understand human behavior. You kind of have to understand theirs the best you can. So I try to, uh, like with Ripley, I, I learned a lot of this with Ripley. Like I would try to actually fence with her myself. And after doing that, like getting her to have that respect for me, her she quit biting me way, way less. It was a significant difference. And the same with like new people that come over, if they try to challenge, and this hasn't been a problem with Maeve, but what it was with Ripley, I would be like, just fight, fight her off with your hand. Try to knock her off balance, get her to fly away. When she flies away, she thinks she's the loser, and then she's gonna have more respect for you. And she's not gonna try to bite you. So I think that that is an important part of their structure. And I'm using this as a, um, I'm just using this as an example, because you're not gonna find in any care sheets to essentially like, fight it's not really fighting but it's like fight with your toucan um but i think it makes sense and, and it's worked for me so uh i'd be interested to see if it would work with other toucan owners but it has worked with me so far and maybe that's a lot of the reason that mave hasn't been as aggressive as ripley is because i've instituted that with her so she's had she just generally has more she's more cautious and more respectful to me and to Tupac and to Beatrix um, than especially Ripley would be. So she's more submissive, and that's kind of what she, I, I think you would want, is for them to be the submissive member of your flock. You don't want them to think that they're higher than you in the pecking order and that they can bully you, because that's not fun. <laughs> but I'm just trying to uh, give that as an example of, like, you wouldn't find that information normally. I kind of just found that through various field journals and observations and then watching a lot, a lot of videos of wild toucans to see how they interact because I haven't had the privilege to be able to actually watch them in the wild, which I'd really love to do someday and to film them for the channel. But, um, you know, one day when I have more money, 
and everything is more settled and we get moved and all that sort of thing. But uh, you couldn't do that if you have, you couldn't spend that much time and effort trying to learn about a specific animal if you had multiple different animals. And that's why they have different zookeepers at zoos that specialize in different types of animals, you know, so they can get the proper uh, care and attention that they deserve. So, but, you know, that's why I, I don't want to talk a bunch of crap about, I'm not calling anybody out specifically, but I just, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. First of all, I don't think it's the best idea to have an exotic animal to begin with. But secondly, mixing several different types of them is just like, you know, it just sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. And at the expense of just getting some internet clout, it's just not worth it. To me, at least. Maybe to them, but not to me, you know. So. Uh, I think I missed some stuff here. SH says, good night and farewell, you rock. Thank you, SH. And I think there was one more I may have missed. Let me see. Oh, let me, let me go to the thingy on my phone. Um... Okay. Jennifer Reynolds uh, says, My, my, this year Anakin guy may be Vader someday later. Now he's just a small fry. And he left his home and kissed his mommy goodbye, saying, Soon I'm going to be a Jedi. Soon I'm going to be a Jedi. Is this, uh... What song is that? Took my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. That one? Who sings that? Why can't I remember who sings that? This will be the day that I die. Oh, it was... Wait, is that right? Is the song called American Pie, or is it... Yeah, it is American Pie. That's what I thought. Don McLean. I couldn't remember the, arti ar the artist. The artist's name. That's clever. Where'd you get that from? I like that. Um... Oh, is it Weird Al? American Pie, yeah. Yeah, okay, someone did make this point, and I think this is a fair point. Uh, it's okay if the spider tubers have a bunch of different spiders because they don't require that much attention. Uh, yeah, I think I think with reptiles you can get away with it a little easier, a lot easier actually, because like, well, arachnids and reptiles they don't need any specific social attention. Usually there's a temperature you got to keep. Like for reptiles, you got to keep the temperature at a certain plate or a certain uh, temperature keep the enclosure at a certain temperature, uh, humidity levels, substrates, and a lot of times you can just use paper towels. And they're pretty, like, snakes are really easy to keep. And they all are basically require the same care, unless you have an arboreal boa or something, like an emerald tree boa or something like that. It might be a little bit different than a ball python, but they eat the same thing and generally you need to know about the same kind of things and it, it, it applies across the board for the most part with like spiders and snakes and even lizards i think lizards are a little different and lizards are seem a little more wanting to they want to be more involved with other animals or people but um i think when it comes to like spiders or reptiles you can get away with it a lot easier I'm specifically talking about, like, uh, so there's some people that just have, like, a million different types of birds. And I think it's okay to have, like, a bunch of different types of birds. Because they, for, I mean, for the most part, they require the same basic attention, if that makes sense. Like bird tricks, for instance. They have a bunch of different parrots, and they have one toucan. But, for the, but they're all birds, and they all require very similar um, expertise 
and knowledge and uh, understanding of body language and stuff like that. But then there's other people that have like fennec foxes and monkeys and birds and, uh, you know, what else? Kinkachus and uh, bush babies and sugar gliders and uh, what else is there? What other crazy stuff have I seen? Just like all these various different types of like, dra I mean, they're all mammals, but they're drastically different as far as care goes and understanding and behavior goes, you know? A monkey and a fennec fox are very different from each other. So, or they have like a serval and, uh, you know, and then they come and they make a video and they're like, oh, my serval ate my bird. It's like, yeah, no duh, it's a predator. <laughs> Why did you mix them to begin with? <laughs> uh, can't expect an animal not to behave like an animal. <laughs> um, yeah, the lemurs, penguins, bats, fennec fox, uh, kawadis. Curtis D says, one more round of berries before you go, please. Yeah, one more round. This one, this round's on Curtis. Maeve, Maeve is trying to sit in the window over there. Come here. You want this? Curtis, it's from Curtis. She's like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> now she's rubbing her head all over the couch. Maeve, what are you doing? She just laid down. She's trying to sunbathe right now. Look, you want this? Okay, Maeve's not going to take a blueberry right now. She's preoccupied sunbathing. She's literally laying on the couch. I need to take a picture of her. Let me do that real quick. Oh, no, now she's moving. She heard me say I'm going to take a picture. I can never get a picture of you doing anything cute because you always move as soon as I take my phone out. Okay. Well, she does it later. I'll get a picture and I'll post it on Instagram. Let me let me make sure we got all the. We're probably we're gonna end the stream here in a few minutes because Maeve is. Complete. Oh, wait, she's doing it again. Shh, everyone be quiet. We're going to try to take a picture of her. Everybody be quiet. I think she heard me. Ugh, as soon as I got up, she stopped. picture of her anyway. It's a pretty decent picture of her. I'm going to post this one. She's not laying down, but it's still a good picture. She's like, she was all spread out, like, she's got her wings, like, spread out over the couch, and she's just, like, laying down like this, trying to, like, absorb the sun through the blinds. <laughs> she goes again oh you know what I could do I'm so stupid I can just point the camera over at her hold on
Yeah, that's your poop. That's your handiwork. Don't put your beak in it. Calm down. Let's see if she'll take a blueberry now. Ugh. All right. What are you doing? What are you looking for? Come here. Come back here. You want to say bye to everybody? Can you sit still with me for a second? Say bye. Guess not. Okay, let me make sure I didn't miss any comments here. Um, you guys at least saw a little bit of her before. Somehow she always knows exactly what I'm doing, and then she decides not to do what I exactly what I don't want her to do. I don't know how she knows, but she does. She's playing in the water now. Um, Samaka John says you should eventually write a paper on toucans and captivity. Uh, you know, I would, maybe I could make a, uh, combination of things I know, but the thing is all, all the things that I know have come from other, well, most, most everything that I know has come from other people that have written papers on it or other experts that study toucans and stuff that I've talked to and uh, keep in contact with or I've read their papers or whatever. Um, and they, they are the ones that are qualified to write those papers in my opinion. I think I'm best suited to take all that collective information and output it here if that makes sense. And maybe I could have uh, a long, a paper that's like a long, more more, more detailed care, I guess, or uh, a detailed um, compilation of what we know about toucans and how it applies to their behavior in captivity, something like that. But it wouldn't it wouldn't come from me, you know. The rep or the source would be a different paper. You know what I mean? There are some things that I've observed myself that I've gone off of, but most of the stuff has been either backed up in some way or originally stated by other people who, you know, study birds on a more extensive level in the wild, which is something I'd really like to do, but, but they deserve the credit for that information. Um, Madeline says, thanks for hosting another Brock's Flock Friday, except for it is Saturday. <laughs> Close enough. We'll, we'll, we'll do one Friday this coming week. Um, I think we're going to wrap it up here, though, guys. Let's see. Yeah, we've been going a little over two and a half hours, and that's almost as long as we usually go. So, oh, man. I'm going to try to go to sleep early tonight for a change. And, um, but I really enjoyed hanging out with you guys. And I hope that you will join me again Friday. And um, there'll be, excuse me, more videos this week. Oh, man. Hello. There'll be videos this week. And we'll, we'll have Beatrix out. Um, you all right there? We'll have Beatrix out next week too. So, but make sure you make sure you go. First of all, hit like if you haven't already. Secondly, come come join the Discord and hang out with us. And post you can post your fan art or your memes or whatever. And there's all kinds of cool stuff that we can talk about and post there. And it's I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, but thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm sorry I was so late and that this was. You, as I didn't have as much notice with this stream as usual, but hopefully some of you that didn't don't usually get to watch the streams on Friday had a chance today. But um, but uh, 
You all right? <laughs> she just jumped over it. What are you looking at? You want to say bye to everybody? Okay. Anyways, <laughs> thanks guys for watching. We'll see you next week, and uh, bye for now. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go stop. Stop the thing now. Join us on Discord. <laughs>